Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I doing? So today I'm going to show you guys a laptop which is based on i5-12450H CPU. Basically 8 cores, 12 threads and out of 8 cores for our efficiency and for our performance cores and it can go up to like 4.4 gigahertz and i believe the base is 3.3 it is sold for like 3.99 it's from chewy let me show you what i'm talking about so this is how it arrived it's basically from chewy core book x and on the back you will see the type and the model and all that so it comes with wi-fi 6 and 14 inch 2k resolution display and 16 gigabyte ram 512 gigabyte storage and i believe they don't have any other alternative options at least from their own shop when you try to check out you choose between the i5 12450h cpu or i3 1220p cpu which is this one so you either get this cpu or this cpu i don't think you can choose the other cpus or change the ram and the storage so that being said that's what i got so let's take a look at it let me take it out of the box the other laptop that i looked from chewy they also ship it with power supply and everything let's take a look at it okay so output is 19 volt 3.42 amp which is 65 watts basically okay this is the us plug oh it's one of these i was expecting honestly a usb-c or a charger but this is it all right so let's take a look at it let's see okay so this is the typical again from the other devices we've seen it warranty card and product inspection report manual and other stuff and the laptop so this is the laptop and it looks beautiful. So this is the only color I believe. I don't think there are a lot of options to choose a color or something. As I said, the screen is 14 inch IPS. It is 88% ratio to the whole screen. Also, as I said, it's 2K display, 1440p. In terms of IO, so this is a power connector, USB 3.0, HDMI, and USB-C. And they're saying this USB-C is full functional USB-C. Basically, it means that you can connect a USB C to display adapter or other things there's another USB 3 port here SD card and this one is a I think headphone jack it's not the power supply connector this is a headphone port and if you want to replace the RAM or SSD I believe you have to open these two let me grab my uh, I fixed it kit okay I believe this should work if you have the same iFix kit, this is the screw that worked, okay? So once we do that though, let me try with this. Okay, so I believe this is where you can install an additional RAM. There should be a RAM right behind here. So you don't need to install another RAM, but if you want to, you can technically install another 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, okay? So this is DDR4. I wanna see inside, so let's keep going. A quick note to those of you who want to also open it. The ones that are close to the monitor, the screen hinge, those are taller. Okay, so keep those separate. Short ones go to all these ones. And the long ones, which are just three, goes on the top ones. Okay, so let's open it up. Oh my God. Yeah, there are screws underneath this. Okay, so those are also the tall ones. I'm going to still keep them separate. Yeah, they are different. They are not the same. The ones that are under these rubber foot that is, you know, glued, they are even longer. Anyway, keep them separate so you know which is which. Okay, if you do that, oh my God, there is another one in here. Is it? No. Okay, I see it. There is one last one underneath right here. If you want to open it up, you have to also remove that. Okay, so just so you know, let's go through it again. There is one screw under this label the sticker this one wasn't really necessary so two under the rubber feet and these three on top are the long screws so keep those separate as i said a ram is already installed we're gonna take a look at it it's air disk ddr4 3200 16 gigabyte ram so them that's what you'll get and in terms of nvme ssd you are going to get air disk pcie3 x4 m.2 228 
SSD, 512 NVMe SSD. That's going to be right there. And for the battery, you are going to get 4000 mAh, which is 46.2 watt hours. And charge limit voltage 13.2 and all that stuff. I think it looks neat. It is clean. Nothing special I see here. Yeah, so as I said, when you're holding the laptop this way, the right side, although this one go in, but I mean, it doesn't go all the way, but it goes in. That's audio actually. So that's not the power connector. This is DC in. This is the power connector. Okay, so you connect the power there, speaker and all that stuff. Okay, I am not going to go any further than this. Not gonna disassemble it. I just now want to proceed to test this thing. Although I'm not gonna put it all together because I will be replacing the RAM and the SSD. So I'm gonna keep it this way. All right, give me a couple of minutes. Let me bring everything together and we are going to test Ubuntu and Windows. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so I have everything set up. I just want to show you a couple of things so first of all the battery is 100 percent okay it's fully charged the other thing that i wanted to show you is a couple of scores for the benchmark i replaced so it's not the nvme ssd that they are shipping with but i'm just showing you the speeds of the pcie slot okay so if you put the right nvme ssd you can get these crazy numbers that being said i replaced the ssd with my own which does have every single tool that i need installed okay here's the cpu z scores so i'm getting uh, on the version 17 on all cores i'm getting 4000 score if you guys like it so i'm gonna walk through it as you can see this is the core speed and multiplier and all that stuff and uh, you can see the information on the cpu you can see the main board you can see the memory okay so 3200 that's half so that's correct spd graphics which is intel integrated so one thing i have to tell you right off the bat the air cooling is right under it right Right? the intake okay and when i was putting it on my table it was flush and uh, it was the temperatures were rising quick so i didn't even attempt to do a benchmark in that situation so i had to put it on this razor laptop stand thingy so once i did that yes then the temperatures you know dropped to 40s as you can see this is like 50 but when i was putting it flush on a table and doing benchmark the temperatures went up to like 90 192 just so you know and uh, i want to show you also this so i got 4100 in the 3d mark cpu test and i showed you the cpu z we will do some more in the ubuntu in linux and i want to show you if you want to play like very modern games obviously not going to work i just want to show you street fighter 6 right for instance it's a 90 20 by 1080 so basically 1080p resolution so if you try it you can see that the fps is 11 and obviously this is not really playable this is a very very modern game yeah you can't play it on this laptop kind of obvious maybe maybe it was maybe it wasn't i just wanted to show you guys that's the situation okay so i'm going to close this game and you can see when i was playing game it rose up a little bit to 64 and let me see the settings on this thing so as you can see i can increase and you see how fast the temperatures drop i'm going to put it on the default settings the i mean the lowest setting okay so yeah that's the calmest setting if you do without the fans on the stand it's going to heat if you put it on a flat surface so intake is just underneath that just keep that in mind and this cpu is not something that use it without a proper cooling it is a powerful cpu you have to cool it properly so if you ignore that game let me see what else we can play on this maybe euro truck obviously will work so let's try as you can see i can play it in 60 fps 55 56 fps as you can see on the top right corner okay so that was kind of expected i just wanted to show you that okay and also i just want to show you guys what the resolution was when i was playing so it's 1440p that's uh, full screen it does have custom settings so if we do ultra on a 1440p it drops to 7 8 frames so in ultra you get 7 8 frames but in the customized version Version, whatever it was we were getting higher so let's try in high settings okay in high we are getting 15 frames per second 
you get the idea i just wanted to show you guys with the integrated graphics that's what you are going to get so yeah it's not ready for gaming but you can play some games on it obviously by the way the whole time the power consumption was here so when we are doing nothing in the operating system basically and it's not charging it's idling 16 15 16 watts okay now watch if i start a cpu z benchmark this goes up to 63 64 so as i said cpu that needs to be tamed you can't run it without a proper cooling otherwise the temperatures will rise up and then it will start doing thermal throttling so keep that in mind so when it's idle 15 watts when it's doing benchmark 65 watts and it's already fully charged that's pretty much in windows everything else seems to be working fine i mean in terms of using it as a daily laptop absolutely this is overkill maybe for that and it's a low power consuming powerful cpu now what i'm going to do this was windows 11 showed you some gaming let's try ubuntu do some more benchmarks and confirm that also ubuntu is supported and i also want to show you guys the bios so let's go there okay so delete is not the bios key f2 is the bios key and we are in the bios and this is what you're gonna see 12th gen intel i5 that's the cpu and processor speed and the bios version and build date and all that stuff you can see it on the screen it's chewy and the memory is 16 and 32 megahertz speed all that good stuff okay control f and reverse oh okay so that's for the key security secure boot and all that stuff boot options save and exit there's not much else in here really that's pretty much it in the bios just wanted to very quickly show you now what i'm gonna do is replace the ssd with my ubuntu image and show you guys ubuntu give me a couple of minutes obviously again ubuntu works and ubuntu is idling at a lower power so it's like 10 11 watts when you're doing nothing in ubuntu okay so that being said let's open up the terminal and do let's go into root shell just in case neo fetch here is the ubuntu 24 you can see also the graphics controller and the intel integrated graphics ram all that information right there on the screen okay one of the first things that i want to do is suspend stress ng sorry as you saw there, I quickly echoed performance into the governor for all the CPU cores. And you can see it goes to 65 watts. And I want to do one more thing. I turned off the cooler on the stand so it doesn't feel like cheating. So now I just put it on a something basically that's tilted. That's all. So as you can see, it just have the razor thing in here, right? Nothing else, nothing special. I'm just placing it. So it's tilted, but this one is off the fan. I'm not using the fan from this so with that being said we are getting almost 300,000 in the stress ng performance score which is quite impressive we went up to like 65 watts so keep that in mind that's kind of like the limitation of the power supply actually because that was the max amp that you can put out so this is 300,000 in the stress ng test another thing that i want to test is actually the wi-fi speeds so the Wi-Fi speeds, as you can see, this one goes higher, 500, 400, 500. So I noticed that as well. So when I was downloading some games through Steam, I was downloading like 480, 500 megabits per second. So you can see the speed right here on the screen. That's for the Wi-Fi speed tests. Another thing that I wanted to show you guys is the uh, Llama test. So Llama list. I have the uh, Llama 3.1, so I'm just going to run that let's see how long it takes how much power consumption we are going to see all that it went up to 32 and now it's back again it's loaded i don't have any other question to ask let me ask the same question i always ask what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow not bad but also not super fast by the way you can see 51 52 watts it seems like we are really using almost the max power of the computer max is actually 65 watts or so but this is quite close so it went up to 50 now it's back to 30 it's not that fast we're going to see some numbers i think it's gonna be eight or ten tokens per second something like that so let's wait and see 15 fair enough so you have it llama 3.1 15 tokens per second that's the speed you're gonna get not gonna push it harder because it's already not struggling but it's not really crushing this model so if you want to push it further more sophisticated more larger models it's not gonna do well i just wanted to show you guys a good example playing videos and stuff obviously that's we don't even have to try so so another thing I want to test is actually ability to read the bias. So let's test that. 
Okay now, so the T key is acting up for me. Maybe it's just my case or I'm not pressing it hard enough. So yeah, you can read the BIOS, basically then write it back. For instance, maybe you're removing Intel ME or something like that if you want to, but this is Intel Alder Lake. So there you go, we were able to read, right? Yeah, you see the file, there you go, 16 megabyte, okay? So BIOS reading also works. In terms of sensors, as you can see, when it's idle, it's like 48, 47, right? But let me do the stress NG test one more time. So you see it goes up to 72, 75, 79, 83, okay. It's coming back down. So it is actually, it looks like it gets hot very quickly. So it's not that bad. So fan ramped up and it's cooling, it's acceptable. Okay, and speaker, I actually never tested the speaker. So for speaker test, I'm gonna remove the HDMI because then it will go to capture card and play with from the monitor. I wanna listen. So screen recording will stop for a second. But before that, let me open up a YouTube video. Okay, let's first confirm that it's not dropping any frames as expected. Let me try a small the audio and other different music okay here is another example with music okay you can hear it kind of right not bad right so I just wanted to show you guys the speaker is also not that bad. So maybe when I was doing the test, when I said when it's flat on the table, this feet, it was not there. So if that feet was there, maybe it wasn't have shown, you know, what, what I was seeing on the screen, like 90 degrees. But here's the deal. As you can see, it's like two, three millimeters. Although, let me see if I put it on the table. Yeah, it's still very kind of flush to the table. So overall, same thing, right? And for all the laptops. When you have a laptop that intake is on the bottom, you can't choke it. Otherwise, you will have thermal issues. And also point out that when I was doing the test, the rubber feet was not there. So keep that in mind, but it's not a big deal. Overall, the, you saw the results, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really didn't encounter any issues. Performance are scoring very well. You saw the scores, you saw the numbers. So power consumption as well, you saw that its max is 65. So when we were doing the CPU test, that was the max that this can put out and that was the 65 so other than that nothing else comes to my mind i have nothing to complain about everything worked fine and this is 399 so for 399 i checked the range of prices of the laptops with this cpu very same cpu maybe they don't come with the same ram and same ssd but kind of in same range they were like 400 450 you know something in that range so price although i can't say it's cheap but definitely not expensive so all other similar laptops are in the same range, but maybe this one is a bit better in the price range. Again, they are a little bit more expensive with higher RAM, but we're talking about same price range. So this is doing fine in terms of price. It's very fair and acceptable, I'm gonna say. If I'm wrong, please, again, let me know down below. I keep learning from you guys, so please keep doing that. All right, thanks for watching. And yeah, please let me know what you think. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.